Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, and what's on tap for today? Well, we've gone to the video archives and we found a video clip, and this is a debate, a Politicon debate, between Chris Hahn, who is a political pundit from the left, a Democrat, and Michael Knowles of the Daily Wire. It was a long debate. We put it down to various parts. This is part one of the debate, the Politicon debate between Chris Hahn and Michael Knowles. Let's get to that video clip and my reaction to it right now. So you two are really good friends already. We already know that. If you didn't know that already, they're very good friends backstage, chumming it up and whatnot. Um, but who disagree quite a bit and have had disagreements on various issues, but one of the more recent ones you've had a disagreement on climate change. Yeah. And I am sort of fascinated, but I'm, I'm pretty ignorant about the whole argument myself, I'll admit. But I'm fascinated by it because to me, it seems like it's a it's a little more black and white issue. It should be a little more black and white issue. And I'm, I'm curious, Michael, as to why do you think Democrats and Republicans have a problem with addressing this particular issue? Is it is it is it something that's happening? Is climate change real? Is it not real? Does the science matter? Does it not matter? Why is there a disagreement? I think you've just explained why, because there are so many questions involved when we talk about climate change. For the right, at our best, we approach climate change with an air of scientific detachment. For the left, at its worst, it approaches climate change with an air of religious attachment and with political opportunism. So very often, uh, in the past few months, you've seen NBC News put forth a climate confessional. That is a, so that you can go and confess your sins against the climate like you would do in any Catholic church. You have the sin of pollution, you have the redemption of recycling. You can even purchase indulgences, as in the medieval church, through the form of carbon tax credits. There is a real sense of eschatology, the end of the world. We're facing a mankind extinction which, of course, there's no scientific evidence for. There is some evidence that the Earth is warming. It's entirely possible that it's warming. But the question is, how much will that be harmful? What do we do to stop it? The, the left has already assumed that it's the worst, where the world is going to end in 10 years, and there's, there's really little evidence of that. The other thing that poisons this issue is that the left approaches it with a great degree of political opportunism. So in the Green New Deal, the $93 trillion Green New Deal that so many presidential candidates have endorsed, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, uh, so many Democratic senators, AOC wrote it, in the Green New Deal, you have not just environmental measures, but you also have reparations for slavery. You also have job guarantee programs. You also have socialized medicine. Those might all be worthwhile objects of the left, but they have nothing to do with the environment. So just coincidentally, this idea of global warming happens to give the left every public policy goal that they've wanted for 100 years. That makes those of us who are conservative a little skeptical of the claims. We look a little bit more at the science of it. And if you even raise that question, the left calls you a denier and they say you should be silenced in the public square. Do you, do you? So Michael Knowles put it very concisely, very precisely, basically said, and this is what I've always said, it's the Church of Climatology, one of the saints of the climate change um, church happens to be Greta Thunberg, you know, Saint Greta Thunberg. And exactly what Michael is saying about it is that, you know, he confess your sins, all right? <laughs> sins of, you know, sins of uh, using gasoline powered cars, you know, sins of using air conditioning, sins of using too much electricity, you know, sins of using, you know, coal, all of those. How do you redeem yourself? Carbon credits. How do you redeem yourself? Self, Self-flagellation, right, basically. Um, getting rid of everything, going back to quote unquote nature, riding a bike instead of, you know, driving a car, shunning airplanes, shunning buses, shunning automobiles, you know, go electric, all these kind of things is basically what's happening. And so Michael says it is, it is a religion to the people on the left, science be damned. And then the question is for those of us on the right, the conservative side, we're basically saying, you know, prove it to us. Show us what you're talking about. Don't just give us these wide blanket statements. The earth is gone. The planet is gone. We're dying in 10 years. And then on top of that, using political opportunism, it's just it's an umbrella. Climate change, global warming, just an umbrella. You want to pass some type of policy on climate change or global warming? Every, every pig comes to the trough 
basically to throw in and say, you know what, I want my piece to go to my demographic, and that's exactly what's going on. Let's see what Chris Hans' uh, response is to this. Do you think, do you think, Chris, that hyperbole is a problem? And if so, on whose side? Well, as pundits, we like to use hyperbole a lot. Mike just used some. I'm probably going to use some. But let's assume everything the right says about climate change is correct for a second. I'm a capitalist. I like to see things move forward. I'm also a progressive. I want to see an America where we are reaching into the future, not reaching back to the past. We are right now using fuels and other energy sources that are 200 years old. And there's a whole bunch of new technology that would be cheaper and cleaner and create new jobs and new industries in America that could bring us forward into the next century. And there's only one party on this entire globe that disagrees that we have a problem with climate change, and that's the Republican Party of the United States of America. The most conservative parties in other countries in the world, more conservative on other issues than the GOP is here in this country, agree that we have a climate change issue that should be addressed. Now, look, we don't know for sure everything about it. We don't know exactly what's causing it, but 99% of scientists agree that man is contributing to it. And if there's anything we can do to fix that, why not fix it? And if we could create a new industry, if we could create new jobs, if we could create better technology, if we could save money, if we could make the air cleaner, we could make the water cleaner, why on earth would we not do that? That's my question. I mean, you could agree with everything he just said, but why wouldn't we try to move forward? Why wouldn't we try to create a new industry to create new jobs? There are a lot of jobs right here in Tennessee that go away. These are new jobs that can be created right here in Tennessee. They can be created in the Midwest, the upper Midwest, all over this country and all over this planet. We just gotta be willing to try. I've heard this BS, this bull crap so often, so many times. There was a lot of whys in there, right? Why don't you do this? Why don't you try, you know, get more jobs? Why don't we, you know, use more technology? Why don't we get rid of fossil fuels? Why are we looking backwards? You know, I want to look forwards. And a lot of ifs, if we did this, if this happens, if that doesn't happen, if this, if that. I mean, all of these things going on, and the bottom line is in nine, again, again with the whole, the whole data fraudulency of throwing a 99.99% of every scientist believes in climate change. All the other conservative parties around the world, they are more conservative than the GOP, but they all believe in climate change. Do you know what the hell is happening in Europe? Do you know what's happening with energy? Do you have any clue? It is not cheap yet. We can still work on that. We can work on nuclear. We can work on geothermal. We can work on a whole bunch of different technologies, clean coal, all of that. But even electricity comes from someplace. It just doesn't come from out of the thin air. Where are you going to get your electrical power from if it's not coming from nuclear? Clean energy. Where? And the technology, let's develop it. But that doesn't mean, okay, get rid of everything that we have right now. We're never going to get rid of oil, folks. We're never going to get rid of, of ice-powered uh, cars, internal combustion engine, okay? It's just not... Because you know what? The third world can't afford what we in the first world basically just take for granted and can spend millions and billions of dollars on and new technologies. Nothing comes of it, but we can do it. Third world countries can't afford to do that, let alone have the people that live in those countries, okay, adopt those kind of measures that we basically are just social justice warring and virtue signaling to everybody else. Unfortunately, the problem is that we all agree that we should create new jobs, we should use whatever energy is going to be efficient and help people heat their homes. The, the trouble with the Green New Deal is that it would not do that. It would be very counterproductive. Independent analyses of the $93 trillion Green New Deal have shown that even if you could somehow pay for it, and nobody has explained how you could pay for even a tenth of it, even if you could pay for it, it would destroy 5.8 million jobs on day one. It would outlaw immediately 90% of American energy. That's in addition to everything else that it does. I, I just want to point out, you mentioned that 99% of scientists agree that man-made global warming is a very, very serious problem. The number that is usually cited, speaking of hyperbole, is 97%. And this was the, movie, the line in the Al Gore movie. This is the line that people cite. 
That number is completely bogus. It is made up. Lock it away with the tooth fairy and Santa Claus. It is not true. That number is based on four studies. That's NASA cites four studies to back it up. One is by the historian Naomi Oreskes that has serious methodological problems because it only cites abstracts of papers. Uh, when, you, when you actually look into what she cites, she gets to 75% consensus. There was then a, a rebuttal of that. There was a refutation of it uh, that showed that not only is it not 75%, in uh, 2008 they showed it was actually 7% of those scientists explicitly endorsed the IPCC. The second one came out and found 97% from the scientist John Cook. This was immediately debunked in the uh, science and education. Actually only found that 1% of scientists surveyed explicitly supported the IPCC conclusion of catastrophic climate change. The third study was a two-minute survey that was sent out to 10,000 people. 3,000 responded. They took out the scientists who would have uh, been in fields that possibly could have attributed warming to the sun. And since you, you since you're trying to, well, instead yeah. of going through yeah, all yeah, the specific lists, there's one last study, though. Well, there's there's one last study. Well, none, like none, none of us there, have a, a, a library I, with us to go and look and check I, I these just, studies. So let me ask you, instead of Instead of rebutting that, I knew since I should have asked Ruben to moderate to, this debate. I, I, uh -huh. Don't worry, I'm sure he rehearsed that line in the bathroom this morning. So, um, before. Anyways, as you can see, as he was doing this thing, one of the things is in terms of being the moderator, this guy, um, you know, I can't remember his name because I don't think he's that important right now. I'll, I'll, I'll remember it in a minute. He was an American Idol guy, right, from North Carolina. Oh, I can't remember his name, but that's okay. As I said, not very important. <laughs> not a big impression on it. But he was, what he's moderating is half the time is spent by him forming his question in terms of that. And as you saw, Michael Knowles is refuting the 99% of global scientists, you know, endorse global warming, climate change. He says the number is 97% because they always want to leave that 3% out. You know, So just give a little bit to the conservatives, give a little bit to the other side, but it's completely bogus numbers. He's going down step by step, basically that there are four um, uh, basically uh, issues that are out there of people that said that this was happening. All those four have been, re have been debunked and you know, the moderator just does not allow uh, you know, that to occur because he knows he wants to shut this thing down because Michael Knowles is making too much sense. Round one in terms of climate change definitely goes to Michael Knowles' the Daily, uh, the Daily Wire. Thank you for watching. Folks, we appreciate you taking the time. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell. Like, share, and follow us. Let us know what you think in the comments below. I'll leave you with my final thought, which is when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Take care, everyone, and stay safe.